Got it. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This uh, meeting is specifically to discuss personnel pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11, parentheses A, parentheses 6. So if I have a motion to adjourn to closed session, please. So move, Madam Mayor. There's second. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Good evening, everyone. Um, we just returned from closed session and no action was taken. So from this point, I'll turn it over to our town manager, Catherine Adams. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. We're excited to introduce to you Withers and Ravenel, who will kick off our open house for you tonight. And we have Jay McLeod and Greg Feldman to come forward and start our land comprehensive land use plan update tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here again and uh, to be kicking off this comprehensive plan update. Uh, so the this is our big two-day event here in town to get to learn as much as we can about this community and your concerns and ideas. And so if you'll, uh, we have kind of a brief presentation to orient everyone to the comprehensive plan update process and then uh, anticipate a breakout with discussions and information gathering and listening. So hopefully uh, we'll do a little bit more than you've done already. Um, so this is kind of what we're going to talk about tonight, Steer Committee, uh, previous planning efforts, next steps. Um, so Withers Ravenel is um, a North Carolina-based firm, uh, primarily construction and design services, but we also have a small group <clears throat> of land use planners, of which Greg Feldman and I are a part. Also within our larger umbrella of the placemakers group, we have landscape architects, like Laura Moore and Abigail Black, who are over there with the Streetscape Vision area. And then we're also joined tonight by Claire Lowe from our marketing team, who will be doing some videography. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, our community planning group does comprehensive plan updates and ordinance updates for towns and counties all around the state. And I particularly have a passion for working at the coast uh, uh, because on the coast, Comprehensive plans actually have to also meet the standards of the Coastal Area Management Act. So a lot of people just know it as CAMA, and you know that you have to get a permit if you want to get a dock or do something like that. But there's also some other standards relating to um, how coastal resources are used by the broader community regionally and statewide. And so uh, it, I, I really enjoy working in that space. So I was really excited to be able to have the opportunity to work with the town on this comprehensive plan update. Um, so these are just some areas where uh, Withers, Ravenel, and I have worked along the coast in terms of comprehensive plan updates and so forth. Uh, this is our team. So uh, you can see the planners kind of on the left-hand side and our landscape architects on the right. Uh, and then also, I'm, I'm sorry, Claire, you're not on here, but glad to have you. <laughs> uh, so a comprehensive plan is really a community conversation to take a look at where we've been and where we've come how far we've come and where we want to go next, and think about how we can get there. And so it, it may involve discussion of any of the factors that you see up there or more. Uh, it also helps staff and leadership prioritize community goals. And so that's kind of one of the big portions of this is the town already has an adopted comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2017. This is not a, a throwaway or a scrape and rebuild. This is a assessment of how far we've come using that tool and uh, what we can do to refine it and polish it and move it forward into the next 5, 10, 20 years. So in addition to those factors that you might see in a traditional comprehensive plan, like I said, the Coastal Area Management Act is a state legislation and it specifies that these top five topic areas be considered. And so <clears throat> Public access to public trust waters is a consideration that the state's concerned about advancing in coastal communities. 
y'all have so many um, beach access points, it's more than any community I've ever seen, so I don't think we're in any trouble there. Um, land use compatibility talks about uh, making sure that uses of land that impact coastal resources are respectful of those resources, environmentally speaking. Infrastructure carrying capacity has to do with um, if the public services and facilities we have are uh, minimizing their impact on those coastal resources. And so you can think of things like stormwater, um, wastewater treatment, et cetera. Natural hazard areas is uh, respecting areas that are prone to erosion, flooding, storm surge, things where we want to minimize risk to public um, health and welfare and property. And then water quality has to do with not drinking water, but um, environmental water quality. So pl the places that we paddle and swim. Um, and then the last one on there is the one I think that most people are usually uh, want to be involved in. And that's really more like what, what, is, what do the people that live here and work here and play here care, really care about? And you know maybe the state doesn't care about it, but we care about it. And so that's important to make sure we talk about those and move that forward. And oftentimes that can wind up being the biggest part of a Camel land use plan because it, we really want it to be, make sure it's a comprehensive plan for the people that live here and um, not a, a plan from the state. Although we will meet the state's requirements. But, um, so the process kind of conceptually involves a lot of learning and listening to begin with. Um, a lot of data analysis and mapping. There's a discussion of the community vision and values and priorities and we have some information from the previous land use plan that we can bring forward and, and also ask about again and make sure that it's still checking in and make sure we're still going in the right direction. Uh, there's a lot of exploring alternatives and understanding different perspectives and seeing how those can fit into the future. Uh, then we kind of move into a plan drafting stage where we're creating the plan and refining it through additional um, back and forth with the steering committee and, the, and, and you all in these kind of open format settings. And then it moves into an adoption phase. And so in this instance, that's, it's a legislative action to adopt a local plan. So that means that it goes to the planning board and then to the council for review and approval. And then in this instance, it also has to go to the state to certify that it met the procedural steps to to be certified as a CAMA compliant land use plan. And then it's used at the state level for issuing those larger CAMA permits whenever those are made, those decisions are made. Uh, so this actual effort actually involves two kind of different components. There's the comprehensive plan update, and then there's also the streetscape vision portion of this. So, Withers Ravenel is fortunate enough to be multidisciplinary enough that we can work together with landscape architects uh, side by side. And we actually all work in the Raleigh office together, which is great. Um, but there was an opportunity here to maximize the amount of input we can get from you all at these events uh, by having both of these run concurrently and also have them information and recommendations flow back and forth between the two to kind of create a stronger plan and a stronger streetscape vision without exhausting people with one meeting after another, after another, after another. And so we really uh, were fortunate to be able to find that, the ability to kind of marry those two separate but concurrent processes. So uh, here's kind of where we are in terms of the comprehensive plan process. We're right at the beginning. Uh, it's very important to us as planners to come here and right away meet with as many people as we can and hear as many different perspectives as we can because we want people to be included and, let, and, and really we want to get the information we need in order to help start directing this plan in a way that will um, ensure that it reflects your values and priorities and concerns. And I think when we get to kind of to the end and we have kind of the plan rollout, I think you'll see that that has happened and that people, you, your, your ideas and thoughts have been brought forward. It's about a year long process. That's another thing to point out. Um, and that gives enough time to really kind of digest the information, do all the due diligence, and assemble the information. In terms of the streetscape vision uh, process, it's a little bit faster. And I'll talk about where that's happening physically in just a second. But um, Laura and Abigail have already been down here, met with some folks that were kind of involved. Uh, they've walked the site with Hallie Willis, your economic development uh, person on staff. They've taken photos. They've done some due diligence. They've done some site um, analysis. And so that's kind of what they have here tonight is to talk about that area of town, that site analysis, get some perspective on what you all think those areas should look like. Because actually one of the recommendations in the current land use plan, comprehensive plan, 
was um, enhanced commercial aesthetics of the main commercial corridor. And so this is kind of starting to organize that vision so that then the next steps can be, well, let's move into more design and actually move towards discussions with stakeholders like DOT or design, or we're not quite sure where that goes yet, but it goes to a vision first. And so that's what this effort is about. And so that'll kind of wrap up in um, late spring, early summer of next year. Uh, so the project schedule, uh, as we currently have it, is kind of laid out on that first board as you walk in. Um, the first, task one, two, and three, are the comprehensive plan components. Task four is the streetscape master plan. You can see the dates for certain engagements as we have those laid out. We do have a steering committee. It's made up of a couple planning board members, a few council members, uh, a couple representatives from each of the advisory committees, and then a couple citizens at large that were appointed by council. And so the steering committee will meet a little bit more regularly to review the information gathering that our group performs, and then also to provide guidance uh, on moving forward and next steps. There's a couple, several council updates, and those little dotted lines kind of show places where we, um, we intermingle events so that we make sure we're meeting with as many people as possible. And so, for instance, you can see on um, February 12th, we anticipate having kind of a more formal uh, engagement event here as part of the comprehensive plan, but also the streetscape corridor vision would be coming back uh, kind of for a rollout kind of final review. So there, there, you can see kind of the way those flow. And anything with an M and a D, we don't quite know when those are going to happen yet, but we will keep updating the schedule and the project website as we move along. And so there's actually a QR code on that board also that can take you to the project website. If you left your email, we'll email you at any kind of important milestone moments or ahead of any events. Um, and then also you can, um, people who are listening or watching from home can go to that same project website and uh, enter their email as well and be kept in the loop and if they want to. And it'll only be used for this. We're not selling your email to anybody. <laughs> um, so in terms of the, uh, what are the study area? What are the areas we're talking about? So for the comprehensive plan, the town can basically do zoning anywhere that's the corporate limits or the extraterritorial jurisdiction. So those are the areas uh, outlined there and shown on our really big map here in the center of the room. Uh, and then for the streetscape corridor, it's a limited areas along East Oak Island Drive, but they were chosen specifically because they have elements that are representative of the different issues and challenges that are faced along that corridor in terms of access, pedestrian safety, aesthetics, um, infrastructure. And so you can kind of think of it in some respects as kind of a vignette study where the solutions that are developed can be applied throughout the corridor uh, with just studying these kind of selected areas. And so we have one kind of on the east end of um, East Oak Island Drive at, Clun at Country Club Drive coming this way, and then we have one just out kind of out here in front of the town hall and headed that way. And I'm going to pass it over to Greg now to kind of get a little bit more input and kind of, again, kick off the, the public listening and yeah. learning process. Great. Thank you, Jay. And good evening, Mayor, members of Council. It's a quick introduction. Um, my name is Greg Feldman. I'm with the Community Planning Group at Withers Ravenel. I am a planner by trade. Actually, uh, my background prior to joining Withers Ravenel is in local government, not too far from here. I was a, both a current and long-range planner at Pender County, uh, so I certainly understand some of the day-to-day -day that the, the town's planning staff specifically uh, faces as far as obstacles and, and challenges are concerned. Um, Jay briefly touched on this previously. Um, in his presentation, but as part of the process, really where we are tonight, obviously for the project kickoff, which we're extremely excited about to hear more of, of more input than we already have gathered today so far. Um, but a part of that initiation and background inventory and analysis includes a review of the town's previous planning efforts. I think we uh, quickly came to the understanding that the town has invested a significant amount of time and energy into its past planning efforts. Um, and there are certainly many, many relevant items uh, from all of these documents that you know, we aim to consolidate as part of this effort. Um, pull those recommendations from each of these plans that are listed here just by example um, and find out what items might still be relevant to the community and, and maybe figure out ways to update and refine those uh, based on up-to-date community preferences throughout this process. Uh, so what we already know, this is, this is a snippet actually from the current comprehensive uh, land use plan, 
And we heard some of these same ideas actually today um, during our initial meeting with uh, various town department heads, as well as our actual first stakeholder interview with, uh, with town citizens. But we heard some, some issues concerning maybe providing additional recreation space uh, in close proximity that's walkable. So again, that leads to providing a variety of transportation options to, to access certain town amenities. Um, we also heard uh, preservation, absolutely. Um, not only on the island, but across, throughout the town. Uh, we, we certainly understand uh, the passion to see preservation through uh, maybe the retaining of, of uh, the town's beautiful trees here as well. Um, so certainly want to, as Jay mentioned, um, not throw out any ideas and community preferences that were heard in, throughout the 20, uh, 2017 update, excuse me, uh, but we want to make sure that those are still up to date and, and align with uh, the community's goals and visions um, today. Uh, so what we've heard so far, I mentioned this morning, uh, we started off when we, when we um, arrived in town with um, a meeting with various town department heads. Uh, we heard certainly, given the recent events this past week, uh, which we all have, have felt, um, stormwater mitigation is obviously a top, a top concern. Uh, so we wanna be strategic and maybe identifying areas uh, with repeat flooding issues and maybe um, tackle preliminary ideas and ways on how to address those. Um, I mentioned it previously on my, on my previous slide, but certainly tree preservation um, that's, that's a hot topic in the community, obviously, and we want to figure out ways uh, to continue that goal and that passion. Uh, we understand how collaborative this community is. I think that was apparent in our um, stakeholder interview just a couple of hours ago, but um, everyone truly cares about where they live in this town deeply, um, so we want to make sure that that is heard throughout this planning process and understood. Uh, pedestrian safety, Jay made, made sure he, he touched on this um, briefly, but we understand there are a lot of ways folks get around town. Uh, so we wanna make sure everyone is, is safe in doing that, maybe find creative ways um, on, on how everyone can, can navigate uh, Oak Island in, in their preferred fashion. Uh, so now I'll, I think I'll open it up here briefly and I'm certainly looking forward to vetting out uh, some of these items that I mentioned that we've, we've already learned, so to speak, uh, tonight through our open house format. Um, very much so looking forward to that, but um, I'd like to open it up now uh, to you, Council, and, and maybe just as a, a, a measurable item, if, if you had to pin it down to one thing, not, not something that we by any means want to hold anyone to, um, but what do we feel that this plan update should accomplish? Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it at that and turn it over if anyone has any initial thoughts. Go ahead. Um, I hope that at the end of this, we will have what we can consider a guiding document for our town as we grow into the the future and have measurable and attainable goals and objectives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I figured, uh, I think that's a fantastic answer. You know, looking, as I mentioned, we took a deep dive in the town's current comprehensive land use plan. Tons of excellent information um, and excellent work that was done there. Um, as far as recommendations and action items go, of course, we want everything to be feasible and, and have a clear roadmap. Um, as far as the implementation component of the plan is concerned. Um, there were several, I think there were, there were 150 plus action items in the 2017 plan. Uh, so tackling all of those is, is a great, great challenge. Uh, so we wanna maybe make sure that we identify um, maybe in a tiered system, you know, what, what are our high priorities in the next three to five years? What are our medium priorities in the next five to seven years and, and so on um, and, and find a plan of attack that way but that's, a, that's an excellent answer, so thank you. Anything else? And again, I'm sure we'll, we'll hear, a, hear a lot of um, a variety of answers this evening and looking forward to that. Yeah. I think we learned this week that uh, we've given a lot of attention to tree vegetation, a lot of attention to size of houses. We have not given much attention other than new building to what we're doing on stormwater runoff. Uh, we have got to start addressing that stronger. Um, and I heard you say, uh, secondly, I, I heard you say the business corridor on the east end. Uh, I'm anxious to hear what your thoughts are on how we can improve and Absolutely. enhance that. Very much so, looking forward to sharing those with you this evening. I think our, our wonderful team, Laura and Abigail over there, are, are excited to talk about that effort. Very excited. Um, you'd mentioned in your, not you, sure. uh, but in your opening remarks, there was a 
uh, comment regarding that we adopted this plan in 2017. And so this was an update and you would actually, I call it a scorecard, but you would provide us feedback on how we've done for the last seven years uh, compared to what we first published in 2017. So I'm very interested in seeing the progress and the scorecard, how, how we've followed our land use plan. Uh, and then of course, ex, you know, look at, you know, updates to that uh, where it makes sense. And then secondly, um, I really appreciate that you're looking at pedestrian safety. Uh, and I think the streetscape and the commercial district is important because I think those kind of come together hand in hand. Uh, if we can improve the commercial district, that should include pedestrian access to the commercial district because uh, people tend to park their car and then select another mode of transportation here. But it, they're ultimately, they end up shopping or dining or going to the grocery store. So I see all of those components kind of connected together as an important next step for us uh, with pedestrians and with our commercial districts. Absolutely. John? Well, I would echo um, what my colleagues have said. I, I think the single most important thing, um, uh, in, in the interest of full disclosure, served on the 2017 land use plan, is getting a plan which has high priorities which are capable of being executed rather than a long list of things that we ought to do. Uh, so what are those five things? That That's in some ways for the public to discern initially and then ultimately for council to adopt as policy. And I would say that the streetscape is really interesting because one of the perennial concerns has been the CR and downtown and Oak Island Drive and as Councilman Martin said, that's tied very closely to it's not walkable, right, and the infrastructure issues. I would say open space and recreational amenities, preserving them, expanding them is also going to be really vital. And lastly, although we don't talk about it enough, looking at the commercial opportunities and where they should be located, because without an expanded tax base going forward, uh, we're not going to be able to afford to live here. Uh, and that needs to be part of our thinking. Um, so um, I look forward to to the report, and hopefully it will deliver something that one through five are really the priority and can be enacted by council. And I'm particularly uh, pleased by the streetscape because I think we've we've needed that for a while. So perfect, absolutely. I would echo Mr. Bach's uh, points. I think they're very similar to my own. Um, I think what was a shame with uh, the, um, it's a great document, an excellent document, but it didn't bring us to a point where it was implementable. And um, whether we group those under, you know, umbrella-like uh, headings in areas for, um, to move forward or prioritize them singly, which I think maybe um, is less effective since they seem to be uh, such smaller units. But I would like for you to leave us with uh, an evaluation tool where we can map our progress against what uh, the community collectively ultimately wants, uh, how it wants to have Oak Island move forward. Um, but I echo remarks about the commercial, the pedestrian safety, um, uh, you, we can no longer ignore that stormwater management is a, right. isn't a problem. Um, I think we've seen that and experienced that in spades. So um, those would be my, my top elements. Absolutely. Well, we certainly look forward to an actionable implementation component of this plan. <clears throat> pending what we hear from the community feedback. And also, um, I'm very curious and interested in seeing how those action items from 2017 um, have been carried out. Uh, maybe there is good reason that we're looking forward to finding out why some of them may have not you know, covered much ground so far. Um, so very excited for that. I speak for both Jay and I when um, we certainly look to implementation um, to be feasible and have a strict and set set of action items uh, along with each recommendation as part of any any successful successful plan um, so certainly understand um, all of the board's remarks there and um, all of council's remarks there excuse me and look forward to this evening um, I hope everyone can can 
stick around and, and check out some of the materials we have. Obviously a big one here in front that I'm excited about. Um, but Jay, I think at this point, I need to turn it back over to you to, to wrap us up um, for the presentation. Thank you. Thanks for that input and guidance. Um, so the next bit is the public open house. Um, we have a few interactive elements and I we'll hope you'll help us populate it. If anyone's watching at home and thinks to themselves that they're gonna miss out, well, you are, so come down. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be here for a little while. Um, uh, we've got kind of a, a few maps over there that talk about where people live and where their favorite places are, and you know that'll help us understand places that we're going to go look at tomorrow morning and make sure we check out and understand places people love about town. Uh, we've got one that's kind of about where does it flood. We had made that before Monday, <laughs> so it wasn't intended. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't intended. It was supposed to be more like where are those areas that flood more frequently, not where the ones that flood during the most catastrophic rainstorm that's hit us in, you know, 50 years <laughs> or more. Um, we have a, a, vi a what do you love about Oak Island? So that'll help us understand why, why you like being here and what, you're, what you value. And so um, please feel free to see some people have already written some stuff. Uh, and that actually is one of the reasons that Claire came down. We don't always have some from, someone from the marketing team with a video camera but um, we thought this would be a great opportunity to get some testimonials and maybe make it into a slide reel or something like that. So if you're okay with being um, on TV, we would love to have you just give a brief, you know, I love X about Oak Island and that's why we came here so many years ago. That would be really nice, I think. And, and it will also help with outreach, I think, and help build the story that supports the plan, right? Because ultimately the plan will be about making this place, keeping the things we like and moving towards the things that we cherish and, and prioritize. So it helps build that story, I think. Um, and then obviously the streetscape uh, vision, visioning area, and it looks like people have already kind of engaged with that. So please continue to do that and ask questions and give input about what you want. And then this big map in the, in the middle of the floor, I'm really happy about this. We've never printed a map this big before. So we didn't even know it was gonna work. Um, we thought it was gonna crash the computer, and it did a couple times. But we got it printed out and um, it's kind of a fun exercise because we've got these different colored post-its and they mean either things that you want to keep. So in blue, it's things that you want to keep, things that we cherish that we never want to lose. Like no matter what happens, if we lose this, we've failed, okay? So keep. So you can write it down the blue ticket and then put it wherever it is in town. Um, and that helps us get information spatially and also qualitatively. Um, the yellow one is for things that you would create things that um, maybe we don't have that we would like, uh, or that we've seen other places and it, it was like, oh, this is a great idea. We should, we should bring something like that here and make it our own. Uh, and then in red, I know people don't like to say negative things, but let's just say toss. We say toss. Things that are here and we're like, you know, we could live without this. Let's just kind of like, maybe we'd be better off without it. Um, so I really hope you'll come up and engage with that. And at the same time, um, Brady is at the Brady is at the signing table. Brady's one of the planners with the town, friendly guy. Uh, Hallie is right behind him. Hallie is also with the town, and she's working closely with um, Laura and Abigail on the streetscape vision. And then Matthew is back there. He's also a planner with the town. So if you want to talk planning, I would suggest you can find Matthew, Brady, Greg, or myself, and tell us what you think, and we'll try and write it down somewhere and put it somewhere. Jay, we have one matter of business to finish before you get started, if we may. Thank you very much. <laughs> Council, do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved, Madam Mayor. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. We are adjourned.